Here I want to animate how busy the assembler actually is and I want to, the assembler to actually change a color. So we're going to in introduce functions and for that I'm going to navigate to my agent palette and there you'll see that I have events and I actually have functions. And a function is nothing other than a method that you can code in one place and then call it from a variety of places inside your model. So what do I want this function of mine to actually do? Let's just drag it to our workspace here. And I use the function, or the, sorry, the prefix fn update color. Because what I want this function to do, it will perform an action, it won't return anything. And I can provide it arguments if I want to, in this particular case I need not. And then there's a function body where I can actually write my code, which is what I will be doing here. And what I want to visualize is the assembler as a little block that is going to change color. So I'm going to name this rectangle SHP for shape and I distinguish between SP for space which are space markup elements and shapes that are just lines and, and, and circles and blocks. So I'm going to call this shape assembler and initially it's just going to be white but what I want to do is I want this block to change color based on the current utilization of my resource pool with which it is associated now to do that I need to to show you how do you actually change the color of a shape. Now I'm going to call this function a number of times every time that there's a new entity that moves into the assembler and once it actually leaves the assembler. Um, <clears throat> so all of the code that will update the color will be contained inside, inside this function body. So first I need to calculate the utilization. And the way in which I want to calculate the utilization is not the average, but the current instantaneous utilization. And for that, the simplest way is to check how many units are busy, divided by what is the total um, available uh, capacity. Now, I want to call that, let's just keep it simple, util. Let me just expand this window a little bit. And I want to call my resource pool, control space, there's my resource assembler. I know now dot space gives me all of the methods, and I'm interested in the number of busy units. But if you recall, if I press control space again, busy gives me an integer, it gives me the number of entities. And in the introduction to Java, we actually said, but whoops, this can be dangerous because integers divided by integers will actually give us an integer and if we then assign it to a double value we might have a problem. So the way in which we convert this integer into a double is to do what we call casting. So I'm going to cast this integer variable and I'm going to do this inside a bracket I'm just going to cast the integer to a double. And similarly, I'm going to, inside a bracket, get the capacity of my resource assembler, which is, let me extend this even more, which is also an integer, so let me just go back and show that, the capacity is also an integer, but it is a variable, so it's not a method with the larger closed green dot, it is actually a variable that I can call directly, 
And that is why it doesn't have an open bracket, close bracket like busy, because busy is actually a method that is being called. And I'm going to cast this integer value to a double as well. So here I have on the left hand side the declaration of my variable utility, which is a double. I take the numerator, the denominator, both of them are now double values, and I end my line with a semicolon. So now I've calculated util uh, utilization somewhere between 0 and 1. Now what I want to do is I want to change the color of that block of mine depending on what this utilization is. So let's say we want to change it from white if it's completely idle to green if it is less than a third utilized and then yellow and then finally red right now to do that i need to check but what is the value of this calculated utilization and i'm going to introduce a if statement here so i'm going to say if some condition then do something and then i'm going to say else if that is not that condition is not met check another condition and then do something and then else, if that condition is not being met, then do something else. And I can carry on in this process. Now, inside I need to, to have a valid condition that I'm checking that evaluates to either true or false. And in the block of code, I will tell it what is it that I actually want to do if that condition evaluates to true. All right, I don't have if thens. And then another if then, because then that will mean that I can uh, fulfill multiple conditions. And in this case, whenever I test utilization, I should only fall in one of the categories. So the first condition I want to check is whether the utilization is 0.0. .0. And I use a double equation because I'm evaluating a condition. If this is the case, and I have to put in my own spaces here for code indentation, just for good coding practice. What should happen if the utilization is zero? Well, I want to make sure that that rectangle that I've created, oops, I can't remember what I called it, but I know that all my shapes, I always start with a prefix, SHP. So I can just press control space, and it picks up currently there's only one shape uh, with the prefix SHP, so it just auto completes, uh, completes it for me. So what about this rectangle? Well, let's see what methods do I have available for myself. Dot, control space. So I can check whether something is contained in it, get the center, get the full color, but I don't want to get that full color. I want to set it. And in Java, get and set methods are kind of good naming conventions for for methods that does exactly that, setting and getting values. So if I want to set the full color, it defaults with some parameter, and what is available, I can press control space, and here I see that I can either provide a color object with a capital C, or a paint object. Those are the two types of, of arguments that I can actually pass. Now, I'm going to use the first one, the color option, but in any logic, there's already a built-in class that deals with um, color, and it is inside a class that is called utilities color. And you can actually see that it is within the com.anylogic.engine.presentation portion of the code in those packages. So it is, I know that, that the utility scholar class is something that any logic coded. But that's the one that I'm interested in. And if I press dot, control space, I've got a whole variety of colors that I can actually pick from. So what do I want this to be? Well, I want it to be white if the utilization is zero. So what if the utilization is not zero? Well, then check. Is the utilization smaller than or equal 0 0.33? And if it is, shape, assembler, 
dot set control space, set the full color. Call the class dot green. And if I'm afraid that I make a typo, rather just use control space. And as I type, it will filter based on what I've already typed in. And you will see that calling green returns an object of type color, which is exactly what I need to, to pass to the set full color method. All right. And every time these lines, these expressions of mine end with a semicolon. So what if the utilization is not zero and it's not smaller than or equal to 0 0.33? Well, check whether it is smaller than or equal to 0 0.66 or 67. If that is the case, call the shape and set its full color. And it auto fills that parameter name for me. That's not the one that I want, so I delete it. And I go for utilities, there it is, color dot, is there a yellow? Yep, there's a yellow. And if this is not the case, the final, I don't have to check it again, I can just say else. It should set the full color. to red. So this is my function body. This is the complete code that I want to execute every time that function update color is being called. It is a method with a whole body. I'm not providing it any arguments and it's not returning any value for me. It's just performing an action. So I've coded my function and I can now go into my assembler and go down to my actions and you will see that I can perform actions every time that an entity enters on Q1, Q2, 3, 4 or 5 or with, when it enters a delay or whenever it exits or it's at the exit just before it exits the block. So I want to make sure that I update my color every time when a new assembly is started. Because when the assembly is started, it means that my resource pool has actually been updated because an assembly will only start if there are resources available. And then when the assembly is done and my resource is released, then I want to update the color again. So on enter delay, I just start typing function. Oops, can't remember what I called that function. Luckily, I always use the prefix fn. So I can just press control space and it picks up currently there's only one function and it completes it for me, update color. And I do the same on at exit or you can do it on exit as well. So what do I expect to see? Every time that an entity moves in here, into the, uh, into the assembly area. Let's just align this so that it's nice and center. I think that should be better. Every time that an entity moves into the assembler, I want the color of the assembler to change depending on the current utilization. So let's see if that actually works. I build it successfully, so I don't have, uh, I haven't made a typo or a compilation error in my, in my function body. And indeed, I see the color 
of my assembler changing. It stays yellow because I pro I'm probably running out of doors. And as the doors are not available and the assemblies are completed, the utilization again turns down to green. And then as the doors become available and I assemble them, it increases to become yellow again. And as I speed this up, I can track that the color of the assembler coincides roughly with what I, exp what, what, what I see in my number of busy units in my chart. So you can set animation both in different agent types, or you can set animation here in the main model, and you can control the color uh, and it's always good to have all of your code in one function so that you don't change code all throughout your model, but you, if you want to uh, update the, the way in which the assembler, for example, is, um, is handling the, the color, you only update it in the function that's called function update color, and you don't have to go and search for all of the instances where you had that code in your, in your model.